I will see Mayenne and all its ships burn before one tyrant lord sets foot in my city. Berlain Supendrag Peron. Hello and welcome back. I am here with Tracy, my good friend. <laughs> I am here with my wonderful friend Amber. And this is the road to Tarvalin. Today is our Bear Lane episode, Woo-hoo! and this one went down to a tiebreaker vote amongst our patrons. Wow. So thank you for that. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. I think it's important to start in Mayenne because mm-hmm. this is her nation, and it really characterizes who she is and why she is like she is. Absolutely. And I think it is important to talk about mm-hmm. Mayenne as a place and as an independent city state. Yeah. When you look at the map, it is just, it's this little tiny peninsula off on the right side of Tyr. Mm -hmm. And it really is just swallowed by Tyr. There's the coast, which is a big part of their economics Mm -hmm. and their wealth. Mm -hmm. But it's because they have their whole like secretive shoalfish. Right oil dealings that they have right. that nobody knows where where they find these fish so it's all secretive and I think it's one of those things that the Mayan leadership who the, whoever they might be throughout time keeps secretive keeps safe their source of income coming from trading kind of makes sense because even though it's like a really wealthy nation it's very small which is another reason why it's considered one of the city states instead of a kingdom or a nation the way that the other i guess land masses countries whatever of the westlands are considered but they have a lot of artisans they're really good at shipbuilding um and they're really close to the sea folk trading lanes oh and shara like don't they have like trading capabilities with Shara as well. Yeah, kind of scary place to be wheeling and dealing Holy with. Holy cow. Holy cow. <laughs> Shara scares me and it's not even a real place. I think one of the things to like get out right off the bat about Mayan being a city state, you have to kind of like think about what that means for them. And I like to think of it kind of like well, I guess Tarvalin would be more like the Vatican. Mayan would be like Singapore, but tiny. <laughs> Not like a massive amount of people living there. Mm-hmm. So this makes it even more interesting and and exciting, I Mm -hmm. think, because there's not a ton of people living there. We're not talking about a huge population, Mm -hmm. but having a smaller population while being able to remain independent is really impressive. Yeah, they do have a standing army. It's the winged guards, but it's only 2,000 men, and that's like officers and everything included. It's not a very big army, especially considering they've got tier, just like right on the other side of them basically waiting for their opportunity to take Mayan as theirs but where they're located is also like of huge defensive value like there's what is it the drowning lands to one side and then they have like coastline to the other they're just really naturally well situated to be able to defend themselves and apparently they have like really thick arms arms (laughs) arms <laughs> thick walls around their city yeah so this whole line of Mayaner leadership they're always referred to as the first mm-hmm. and they claim descendants from Arthur Hawkwing mm-hmm. through his grandson mm-hmm. but this is kind of like laughed off by everyone else besides the Mayaners right so we don't really know if this is true mm-hmm. or not it's just kind of like one of those things that gets passed down and you know wheel of time myth becomes legend (laughs) blah 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 are they really i don't know maybe possibly yeah but i think there's something also about that that is inspiring Mm. for your nation so i think this is maybe some type of it's good pr when you think about it yeah it's not true Mm -hmm. (laughs) really even the whole story of how this hawkwing descendant comes to Mayan 
like he his mother was maybe assassinated and he maybe survived the assassination attempt and if i read it right the label first lord or first lady was supposed to be like figurehead ceremonial in intention and it was just like as time went by the power began to accumulate I actually had a question for you about the the way that the first consider themselves descendants of Hawkwing, but like the outside world is like, ha ha ha, yeah, right. Do you think that in any way that affects the legitimacy of their rule? No, I don't think so, because the legitimacy of their rule is sitting as a figurehead of the nation. Mm-hmm. So as long as there's someone sitting there, they're in power. Mm. There hasn't been an uprising. Tyr didn't take them over. Mm -hmm. They're still fighting. Mm. So no, I don't think so. Okay, that's cool. I was just kind of wondering about that, you know, like when an outside group of nations thinks that one little city-state is kind of a joke, it it feels like, oh, that really has negative (laughs) uh, consequences for international discussions and opportunities but I agree with you yeah I don't think Mayenne is running around like the Westlands like we're the biggest and the baddest (laughs) and the best you know like they're not trying to conquer other nations Mm. they're just trying to remain sovereign yeah they're looking at themselves inwardly they're not trying to spread from what it looks like, especially in this time period during the Third Age. Mm -hmm. It's just keeping that tyrant military, the High Lords, out Mm -hmm. and making sure that they're not swallowed. And I think, too, the people of Mayen are probably pretty proud people. Mm -hmm. I think that their leadership with Bear Lane is pretty inspiring, Mm -hmm. and I think she's really Mm well-loved. So I think it's... They've got a good relationship going between the leader and the citizens. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I think that even though it could be seen as a joke elsewhere, I don't think that Berlaine is really too concerned as long as she gets what she wants. Mm-hmm. Lovely. So should we talk about her? Yeah, I think the last thing that I wanted to mention about the first is that there's no distinction of gender when determining heir. It is the eldest child of the reigning first who inherits the title that excuse me who inherits the title regardless of whether it's a male or a female and that's not necessarily the case in other nations very forward thinking Mayan. <laughs> yeah i like it so yes so bear lane let's do it i'm ready her full title is bear lane sir pendrag peyron the first of mayen blessed of the light Defender of the Waves, High Seat of House Peyron. But yeah, I really like that there's so much attention given to what is in the name, mm. what is in the full title. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Defender of the Waves just sounds really majestic. Yeah, it does. I like that one. And physically, she's pretty majestic as well. Right? <laughs> Babe. I think every character that comes in contact with her, the first thing they think of is, wow, bombshell. Right. right? Like tall, pale, like alabaster skin with long black hair and large dark eyes and she's curvy and she's sensual. Mm -hmm. And for her, her beauty is a weapon. Yeah, for sure. I was going to say the things I wrote down like, Young and beautiful, sensuous, and sexy. Like if we're going off of physical kind of attributes without digging into her intellect, because that's another area where she's quite impressive. Yeah. Like, not only is she gorgeous, but she has this really expert ability of judging things Mm -hmm. politically, like seeing how the tides rise and fall Mm. politically and being able to calculate where she can make her move and who she can be aligned with at any moment. Yeah, And this is, of course, because of how she is trained for her leadership Mm -hmm. and just how, like, defensively she has to be to protect Mm Mayan. 
Yeah. I mean, she took the throne really young. She was only like 10, I think, when she became the first. Her mother died when she was nine. Mm -hmm. Like mom and then dad right after each other. It's heartbreaking. So yeah, that would have been like a year after her mother died. Mm -hmm. She takes the first of my end title Mm -hmm. and i think again like it's really a shame that we don't get bear lane point of views Mm. in the story there's kind of one later on Mm -hmm. but it is not from her point of view it's from the narrator's point of view so it's not in her own voice i think that it's a really like great disservice because we see bear lane through the eyes of everyone Mm -hmm. else and this definitely colors our judgment of her I think oh my gosh yeah but I mean I'm not saying that if we got things from her point of view that it would change our image of her drastically because of course even if someone does have their own point of view chapter or paragraph even there's always that question of unreliable narrator Mm -hmm. People can lie in their thoughts. <laughs> like, delusions are strong. Absolutely. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. So I'm not saying it would change everything, but it would still be really cool to get to see her way of thinking and what she's thinking of the characters who are so often judging her. Right. I guess maybe what I was thinking is how much I agree with you that even though we don't get her internal monologue or point of view or whatever we're I think we're given a fairly maybe not maybe not well-rounded maybe that's the wrong word but we definitely get a lot of perceptions of her from a lot of different people and I think she proves herself kind of over and over again that she's intellectually capable of standing with pretty much anyone else in the Westlands she's oh yeah she's intuitive she doesn't really have some of the same prejudices that seem to influence some of our other nobles that we see in in the series itself oh I think I just remembered what I wanted to say though okay so she's the full package right she's smart she's beautiful And, oh, yes, she's been trained to defend herself in the event of someone trying to physically assassinate her. So it's almost like, what can't Bear Lane do? Like, just looking at what we're saying about her, she sounds amazing, right? right? She sounds incredible. (laughs) But so many of our characters that come across her are just completely infuriated by her. The women can't stand her. The men think she's a floozy. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> she can't win mm-hmm. from, like, the point of view of our main characters for the most yeah. part. But there's still something inside of me that really, I just, I love Berlaine. I think that she's such a fun character, even though she does some, some not so nice things. But I think that there's absolutely, like, a really incredible story arc with her. From where we start off in the story. Mm -hmm. The way that she's perceived by other people, she doesn't have to be nice to everyone. Like, perhaps this is Berylaine's version of Machiavellian. Like, it's not necessarily better to be feared than loved, but to be (laughs) seduced and outwitted, perhaps. She's working inside the confides of her power as a woman Mm -hmm. right like Mm -hmm. she's not out there sword fighting men no like yeah she can defend herself but she's not taking power physically through fear of physical strength Mm -hmm. but she's using her strength as a woman Mm -hmm. how to succeed in this struggle especially in tier with like the tyrant high lords who are all men Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like she's coming at it the only way she can Mm -hmm. and this is very cersei lannister Mm. when i think about it because she's beautiful she's intelligent for the most part Mm -hmm. so that's kind of like how she goes about getting her way Mm -hmm. because she she's not a man Mm -hmm. she can't make threats like a man she's responding to the narrow way they 
choose to see her. And so she's like, she plays into this is what you expect, but she's like five steps ahead of them, I think. I think that as our society has changed in some ways, I suppose, because I know when I was younger reading Bear Lane, I was always like, oh, Bear Lane, just flirt with everyone. You sleep with everyone. How dare you? Like, I was definitely like in the boat of slut shaming Bear Lane. And I think that whether it was intentional or not, maybe it was, Jordan wrote a woman who was going to inspire women in a different way 30 years later, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I really can't say if there was, if the intention was to, like, take the stereotype Mm -hmm. and, like, show that the stereotype is wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much thought was put into Mm -hmm. it. I would almost guess that she just evolved naturally. Mm -hmm. I don't think Jordan was trying to get people to, like, do some inward thinking Mm -hmm. on (laughs) sexuality (laughs) and the patriarchy with Bear Lane. I think it was like, she's hot, she's cool, she can fight. Right. And she keeps coming back in the story because she filled a necessary role Mm -hmm. of like being a part or I guess adversary of some of our other characters. And then later on a friend. Mm -hmm. So... But I, I'm, like, struggling right now because I think I have to jump into spoilers. <laughs> okay. Because I'm, like, I keep cutting myself off um, before saying anything. Okay. I think the only thing that I had in here that I think could possibly fit in for non-spoilers are the parallels that are given to Bear Lane as a character where, like, inspiration for her may have come from. And one is Ava Perone, which I don't know if I get that one. Listed in the wiki Wheel of Time, it says the famous Argentinian woman who became a hero to her people and came from humble upbringings. And I... Berylaine's born to royalty. She doesn't come from humble upbringings. She's owned this since the minute she was born, basically. So this one didn't really track for me. But the second one, Cleopatra of Egypt, resounded tremendously. And for that one, you can't get into talking about how they, like, really coincide unless you do go into spoilers. So, segue? (laughs) Yeah, even, I mean, even on the Cleopatra track, Berlin is always said to smell really good. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking of, of like, Cleopatra using her, you know, secret. Right. Perfume recipes or bath oils or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Dark hair to her shoulders, seen as a beauty by everyone around her. Politically savvy. Yeah. I think uh, I see the the similarities there. But that was, I think that's about it. Unless you want to talk about Berlin in the TV version in non-spoilers or talk about that in the spoiler section. I think I can say this without spoilers. Mm-hmm. So... I would really like for Bear Lane to be a part of the show. Mm-hmm. I know that there's not space for having a thousand different cast members who have speaking roles. Like, I just don't know how they're going to do that because there are so many characters. Yeah. But Rafe being who he is, <laughs> I feel like it's a safe bet that we will get a Bear Lane. Yeah, agreed. And I think the way that they have approached the television show, mm-hmm. we could expect a very sex positive Bear Lane, mm-hmm. someone who is not ashamed of her sensuality, who is not ashamed of using sex or her beauty as a weapon. Mm-hmm. I think it would be cool. I think that in this society, it's okay. Like, this isn't something that people will be, like, clutching their pearls about. <laughs> oh, I do declare, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think that a sex-positive Bear Lane would pull the Wheel of Time world into the Game of Thrones world? No. Okay. Because sex is sex is sex, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we, we don't have to have Game of Thrones level, like, brothel scenes, mm-hmm. right? You know, like, we don't have to have that type of sexuality on this show. Mm -hmm. 
but it is very obvious how she is Mm -hmm. without having to actually see it. Mm -hmm. If an actress or actor is talented, like just a look Mm -hmm. says enough. Yeah. Berlaine making eyes at someone Mm -hmm. and someone kind of like smiling back, Mm -hmm. like you know that there's a relationship there. Mm -hmm. Regardless if they want to physically like show that on television Mm -hmm. or not, like I think either way it could be fine. But I don't, I don't know if Prime Video is ready to be that explicit yet with the Wheel of Time. Yeah. I would much rather have more storytelling than sex. Like, a lot of times for me, it just takes up valuable screen time when we could be getting so much more of the story. So I think we could we could put, like, every... She says until there's a Daniel Henney sex scene. <laughs> I'll still blush furiously through it. I won't lie. But I also might not skip through that one. Again, I I think the question here is maybe like more about the female gaze Mm -hmm. versus the male gaze, Mm -hmm. because I think what you're describing is more like the stereotypical, like very obvious scenes that are shot by men, (laughs) where it's supposed to be something that is consumed by men, (sighs) therefore it's made for Uh them. There is a difference, I think, and with Bear Lane, it doesn't have to be like that explicit, and I think that's the problem that I'm having explaining it, because it's usually a little bit different written by a woman, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. what I mean? No, absolutely. I think you did a, a brilliant job explaining that. Like, that's, I think that's exactly what I'm, I'm leaning towards wanting, as opposed to what we get so often in television, in film, where it's... I don't know. That male gaze is real uncomfortable. It just is. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. But again, like, I, I'm i also the type of person where, like, when Game of Thrones was on, I wasn't like, oh, my. You know, I was like, <laughs> oh, another brothel scene. Okay, right. whatever. Yeah. I'm all for it. Row the show whichever way feels, I guess, natural and empowering, I hope for. Do you have any actors in mind that could play Barry Lane? I would just want someone unknown, yeah. someone that I don't associate with any other television show, mm-hmm. someone, a fresh face. Oh, I love that. You know? All right, let's jump into spoilers. That sounds great. So before like I get to any specific chapters mm-hmm. or anything like that, there's one relationship of Bear Lanes that I really, really love, and that's with Ruark. It's this mentor almost like daughter protege Mm -hmm. with Ruark and it's really surprising agreed especially because in these books so often the cross culture and different gender relationships they end in calamity Mm -hmm. (laughs) so often Mm -hmm. where it's like this is the one where I'm just like I really like her relationship with Ruark Mm -hmm. and the other Aiel Mm -hmm. that she's in close with Mm -hmm. that's actually on my spoiler list as well as the what makes her so lovable to the wise ones like why are they so drawn to her like a queen at one point observes amis kissing bear lane and the way a mother kisses a daughter and she's like what the heck what is going on here and i'm like what was it I think it's just something in the Aiel culture to really respect how transparent, maybe that's not the right word, just how forthright she is. Mm -hmm. Like she says what she means and she means what she says. Mm -hmm. She is authentic. In talking about Ruark, he's one of the first Aiel encounters that she has as far as I'm aware of. Like... When we first meet Berylaine in the series, she's delivering a letter to Moraine. And as she's leaving, she passes by Rourke and she's like, you're the head of the Aiel. I will dine with you. And I think the fact that, like, she doesn't have any prejudices. Like, everyone else is like, oh, my God, the Aiel. Like, they all have these really set ideas of what the Aiel are. And Berylaine 
just sees another potential tool for her tool bag. Like everyone gets the same treatment. What can you do for me and for my country? And not that that's a bad thing, but like, I mean, that's her whole job, really. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Adrienne says it shows respect to Aiel and that she's open to learning, mm. I think is what that says. Yeah, the Aiel are so honor-based. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, she shows honor, even though sometimes she can act a little petulant. But yeah, <laughs> she's always... <laughs> <laughs> she's sometimes being put in her place by Ruark, like, I'll send you to bed without supper. <laughs> and she does it. Like, she she's, she goes along like, with runs. it. Like, runs. Here, I'm running because mm -hmm. Ruark told me to. I would still love to know what that conversation was that the two of them had that has placed that kind of response system in her to what he threatens or intends. I don't know. But, like... What did they say to each other? Okay, I want to start talking about some of these chapters with Bear Lane. Sure. The one that always caught my attention is the one in Lord of Chaos. And it's where she puts everything together and finds Rand's abandoned sword and dragon belt. So it's the festival of lights i think so it's like the or the feast of Randland version Where's... of winter solstice okay and it's mayhem right like it is just party time people making out on the street this is in Kyrian, everything right? is chaotic yes yeah. this is in Kyrian. Okay. and she comes in and this is during like one of those big moments where Perrin and Fael are fighting because of Bear Lane, mm -hmm. and she comes in into Perrin's chamber. I, I don't know if it's Perrin's chambers, but it's Perrin, Fael, and Loyal. Fael and Loyal are playing stones, mm -hmm. and Bear Lane like opens the door, and she's got the sword and the belt, and Perrin is like growling at her, like out you get out mm -hmm. and he's ready to like push her out the door and she's like look like look you idiots like he left his sword and his dragon belt mm -hmm. he was taken mm -hmm. like he wouldn't leave this behind so she's the first person to put this together mm -hmm. she is not a dummy mm -mm. and everyone else is kind of like oh no no like what what do we do and parents like okay like i'm assembling everyone i can and then we have this like assembly of one of the most cool, most massive like war parties in the Wheel of Time. And I just love that she's a part of it. She even sends 200 of her winged guards. 200. Mm -hmm. Like she is one of the, in terms of size, she has a very small army compared to some of these people. So like the Aiel can afford 5,000 spears, 1,000 farter I my, mm -hmm. and 94 wise ones, mm -hmm. right? And Bear Lane's like, here's 10% of my military. Right. right. Go, I give this to you. And she's ready to join mm -hmm. them even. Like she would have gone too, I think. Absolutely. If she could have, but she has to stay in. Kyrian because there's Shido like approaching and that's the whole issue with like this war party they can't move too many pieces outside of Kyrian otherwise the Shido will come in and just sack the entire city masterpiece of a chapter and I love that like there's this really great metaphor with like loyal and fail in the background playing stones because it's like a chess game this entire chapter yeah. like how many people can we take who can we move what can we do and bear lane is like the one that kicks it off mm -hmm. yeah i was just reading over the where that starts to unfold in that chapter and how like her mind works to connect all the dots like she's like i just you know this whole this whole thing smells fishy. So these are the things that I started to do. No one else was doing those things. Parents been off searching, like now that they think that Rand's actually gone. And she's like, so here are the dots. I have connected them. We need to do something. Yeah, good observation, Amber. Love that about Bear Lane. There's another chapter of hers where I think it was like this big 
I don't know, like, turning point for me where I was like, I love her. I just <laughs> love her. Like, that's that's the chapter. Mm-hmm. That's the bit. I love it. And, I mean, that's a later one. That's not until, I think, Crossroads of Twilight. Yeah, chapter seven and Crossroads. But it's such a good, it's such a good, good chapter. Even though this is very honestly a plot line that many people hate yeah and i don't know like i'm i'm not one of those people that really hated the perrin fail kidnap shido Mm -hmm. extravaganza (laughs) it's just long Mm -hmm. is the thing it's very long but in this chapter perrin's party is pretty much trapped they have Masima's men, the prophet's dirty weasel boy party <laughs> mm-hmm. on one side mm-hmm. and dark hound tracks mm-hmm. on the other. Mm-hmm. So they're like sandwiched in and everyone's really starting to lose hope. They're searching for the kidnapped Fail and more gays who was undercover. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's kind of getting to the point where it's like, we're going to die. Like we're losing hope and... It's like the narrator quote about her. I I think it's from parents' point of view, but I don't know if this is like parents' thoughts or like just the narration. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, am I getting this as like parents' thoughts or like Robert Jordan's thoughts? Mm -hmm. Because every time it goes to narrator, like I feel like that's Robert Jordan's voice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And... It's, she was a ruler, small, though man was, but there was a regal tone in her voice fit for the queen of Andor. Back straight, she made her saddle seem a throne, and she spoke loudly enough to make sure everyone heard her decision, firmly enough that everyone knew the decision had been made. And she says, if we have enemies all around, then going on is as safe as turning back or turning aside. If turning back or aside were ten times safer, I would still go on. I intend to see the Lady Fael rescued if we must fight our way through a thousand dark hounds and trollocs as well. Like, that I have sworn to do. And then, like, her winged guard starts going crazy and they've got their... (laughs) I love their description of their red breastplates and their lances Mm -hmm. that have, like, these red streamers on them where I'm just like, ugh, bear lane. Yeah. Girl, you are just cool. That is so, like inspiring yeah. such a great going off into war One thousand <laughs> percent there's the line in here that is like jumping out at me is the smell of fear remained but they sounded ready to cut their way through any number of trollocs rather than appear less in bear lane's eyes <sighs> she's so inspiring yeah. and then the next chapter is where they find the shido camp uh-huh. and Karen is just in a whole different world, right? Like, Mm -hmm. everything flips for him. This is a huge changing point of the story. And they're getting together trying to think, like, what their next step is going to be. And Berlaine is like, look, I have jewels. Mm -hmm. I have money. We can buy her. I will give you as much as I have to get her back. And if I don't have enough here, then I will send people back to get more <laughs> of my jewels. Because at this point, they have Ashaman who can travel mm-hmm. and open gateways. Mm-hmm. She didn't have to do this. I think she really is trying to make up for all of the messed up shit that she's done to Perrin. And it's like, this is the only way I can help right now. And I will give you as much as I have. Yeah. She's not half-assing her attempt to help Perrin get Fael back. There's nothing in her behavior at this time that isn't completely focused on making this happen. And it's... And making it right. Yeah. Yeah. It's impressive. Doesn't she even kind of change the way that she's dressing at this time, too? She could be wearing the diadem of the first, like her hawk tiara i'm not i'm not entirely sure but she could be yeah because when they go in to get file out she tries to be a part she tries to lead the winged guards but 
Perrin is like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Masima wants to kill you. <laughs> Stay back. Stay protected. You know, you were kind of obvious in that diadem, dear. Should just, let's keep you safe. It's important. I am one of those people that is not a huge fan of the Fael kidnapping plotline. But I have to say that there are highlights to it. Like you said, it just goes on too long. Bear Lane's behavior through this is not one of those things that I don't like. It's, I don't know, it's really nice to see her on the page the way that maybe more reflects who she is on the inside in some ways. Like, the only reason yeah. she behaves flirtatiously is it gives her an advantage. And I think if she didn't feel as though that was necessary, this is perhaps the way that she would be all the time. Mm -hmm. It makes me think inwardly. Mm -hmm. Like, how often do I say things like, oh my god, like Tom's Deste Mar skills are incredible. Mm -hmm. Love him. He's a badass. He kills people, right? Mm -hmm. Tom is not an innocent mm -mm. person. He does some kind of messed up yeah. stuff. But because it's Tom, I'm like, yeah, like, heck yeah, <laughs> love it. Bear Lane's doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's just using seduction. Mm -hmm. It's even stated that she could probably out Deste Mar some Kyrians. Mm -hmm. So, like, just because it's a woman and she's using her body, does that mean that more people are initially turned off by it or kind of, like, quicker to judge her? Mm. I don't know. Maybe? I do. I, I think it's I think it's what you said the, the second time. We're quicker to judge her. I know I was. I mean, we had mentioned earlier the way that Verlaine is seen, especially by the other female characters. Like, <laughs> when I was doing the search through my my digital book here okay so for example as i'm searching for it these are the things that pop up in response to i think this is an elaine's chapter from the shadow rising so her observations of barrelane if that chip barrelane has her claws into him it will not be easy to pry them loose barrelane may look soft she sure she certainly makes men see her so but i do not think she is there was red in his cheeks. He was thinking of Bear Lane. There are all these ways that they think of her, and it's usually really unflattering. Bear Lane would have been wrapped around him by now. And then Bear Lane, or Elaine being like, I'm not Bear Lane. I'm not going to be, like, all over him. That's not my way. Like, Bear Lane's way is bad. But I think that's, like, it's one point of view, and I think it's the one that I had for so long. You know, like, that was the point of view I followed instead of yeah the... of course because you associate with the main character right yeah and i think that i was i apologize barely i was unfair to you <laughs> i feel like a queen could have taken that step back as well especially after seeing how the wise ones react to her instead of being like i still think everything barely does is wrong and dumb but the wise ones sure like her the heck is wrong with the wise ones yeah, and I mean, and I'm not trying to say, oh, everything Bear Lane does is okay. Right. Because it's not. Like, she does some really terrible stuff. Yeah. Getting people to think that her and Perrin slept together while he's, like, injured in her tent. Not cool. Definitely a not shitty cool. move. Yeah, not yeah. cool. But on a whole, as a character, I think Bear Lane is really fun. Yeah. One of the things that I was thinking about is how... You know, at the end of the series, Galad and Bear Lane end up together. And we don't really, like, get to see anything past, like, that initial, we're in love. But I was like, from a political standpoint, Galad is a fucking catch. Like, she's been after Perrin this whole time because she thinks it'll give her a tie to the Dragon Reborn. But if she ends up with... Galad as it looks like she's going to and she's the sister-in-law of the dragon reborn exactly exactly yeah. who is also the queen of andor and kyrian and her husband is the head of the white cloaks right so or her her to be husband would be the head of the white cloaks not a so like one of the biggest militaries right? probably right 
And then he's the son of two ruling houses. So yeah. he's... I- I'm happy for her. Me too. Good for them. Good for them. And think of those amazing looking children. Oh my god, <laughs> they'll be they'll be like the uh, like Neja's family. And oh my god, if this was like if this was shot in the '90s, it would be Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's such a shame because that those last her only. I'm doing like air quotes point of view chapter is a memory for light Mm -hmm. chapter 37 which is massive it is probably one of the longest chapters in the series but a lot of flipping through pages to find this and I was just thinking like is this really her point of view really could it be Mm -hmm. and it's just kind of like the narration of her tending to Galad and witnessing the destruction of everything and she's saying that she knows that the dawn is coming yeah and that soon it should be daylight yeah. but there will be no light and galad's like take this you know like mm-hmm. one last final breath take this and she grabs the fox head medallion and then that's taken back to matt mm-hmm. Oh, it could have been so much more. I would have loved to have at least three Bear Lane point of views to really get inside mm-hmm. the woman's head and see what she's thinking and feeling. But no dice. No dice. No dice. So Amazon Prime Video, let's let's do it. Let's let's give Bear Lane a story to tell. I think that that's a valid request. I'm on board for that. I mean, seriously, like just looking at like the parallels between her and Cleopatra I was really excited because it's like she could be put into play in so many places where she's already put in the book series and she fosters a story so often that we need to have so I could do without the love story or the not love story it's not a love story I could do without her incessant attempt to seduce Perrin I understand that for her the idea of gaining political standing and safety is like goal number one and that Perrin feels like he's a I'm gonna put air quotes around this good option but he's really not for so 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 many reasons that she's somehow just refusing to see and I feel like that could be flipped into her becoming a confidant of parents instead and in that way gaining the trust of the dragon reborn and people around her i think that would be like keep her sex positive and everything that's totally fine but like just eliminate that whole i'm after parent and causing all these problems it's just it's not necessary we don't need another love story you could do it you just don't have to trawl it out yeah 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 Throw it in there for a minute and then dump it. <laughs> yeah, there's not enough time anyway. Right? So, like, I mean, and just, I mean, seriously, even if you just maybe eliminated that whole aspect of it, it might even be better. Was there anything you wanted to say before we wrap it up? Hmm. No. All right. So, everyone, thanks for listening. Mm-hmm. Like and subscribe. Please do. And we will catch you next time. Goodbye.